Welcome back for another video. Today, I will be talking about the Rancho San Pedro Gang. The Rancho San Pedro Gang are a Mexican-American street gang located on the west side of San Pedro, California. They originated in the 1970s in the Rancho San Pedro housing projects located on 1st Street. In 1988, Angelo Regino, a known member of the Rancho San Pedro Gang, was convicted of killing Johnny Healy. Regino made headlines with his assassination with Freddy Krueger the 1980s fictional serial killer of Nightmare on Elm Street films. Police say Regino wore a brown brimmed hat like Freddy Krueger and allegedly told a robbery victim he was the movie killer. Johnny Healy was sleeping in the back of a pickup truck when he was robbed and shot to death on 18th Street. Regino was convicted of murder, attempted murder, two robberies, and two attempted robberies stemming from four separate attacks last January and February. The Rancho San Pedro and Dodge City Crips were once allies and shared the Rancho San Pedro housing projects. Until 1995, when a member of the Dodge City Crips was killed inside the housing projects. The Rancho San Pedro gang was held responsible by the Dodge City Crips. This accusation has caused a violent conflict between the Rancho San Pedro gang and the Dodge City Crips. Racial tension had resulted in multiple hate related crimes between two gangs until 1995, with the San Pedro housing projects being dominated by the Rancho San Pedro gang. In 2011, the Rancho San Pedro made headlines after being a part of a two and a half year criminal investigation dubbed Operation Private Town. 81 members of the Rancho San Pedro gang got arrested. On the evening in January 2005, Oscar Slater Klein went to several bars and returned home after midnight. That same evening, Bullock met Michael and Planchi at a party, and they later went to several other parties in the San Pedro area. They left the last party, followed by a group of women in another vehicle, and stopped at an AM PM gas station to purchase beer, planning to go to Michael's house to continue partying. At the gas station, they saw Andy Treo, Hector Gutierrez, and several others. Hector was a member of the Rancho San Pedro gang, and was dressed in a red sweatshirt, red shorts, and red sneakers with white trim. Michael invited Treo and his companions to his house. Michael's house was near a small shopping center. Shortly after Michael and Bullock arrived, Bullock and Slater walked to the Rite Aid to get ice and soda. As they returned, Hector, accompanied by Treo and three others, arrived in a navy blue Jetta, which they parked down the street from Michael's house. There were about 20 people at the party. Hector was still dressed entirely in red, and was the only person at the party so attired. Bullock had a tattoo above his left shoulder which said, in loving memory of Kiko Loke. Kiko Loke was a Dodge City Crip gang member who had been murdered a year earlier, and Bullock knew Kiko from their childhood. The Dodge City Crips was predominantly a black gang and was a rival of the Rancho San Pedro gang, which is predominantly Mexican. Bullock raised his sleeve and showed his tattoo to a woman at the party. When Bullock displayed his tattoo, Hector's reaction was not good. He appeared to have an uneasy look on his face like an offensive look on his face, and he said something to his friends. Trejo, along with Hector, approached Bullock and said they were from Rancho San Pedro. It was their neighborhood, and began to shout racial slurs and dissed Dodge City Crips. Bullock said he had no problems with them and was not a gang member. Later, David Rojas, whom Bullock knew by the nickname Hitman, approached Bullock. Bullock knew Rojas belonged to the Rancho San Pedro gang, although he was from a different clique than the one to which Treo and Hector belonged. Rojas asked, what's up with your tattoo, and said he did not like that fool Kiko. Bullock said Kiko probably did not like him. Sometime during the evening, Rojas told Oscar that his boys or something had a problem with Bullock, and he didn't know what to do. Bullock did not try to argue with Rojas or get into an altercation with him. Rojas then spoke to Trejo and Hector. Bullock decided to leave the party and went out to his car, which was parked on Michael's driveway. Hector, Treo, and Rojas and two others were waiting for him by the driver's side door. Bullock went back into the house and asked Michael to walk out with him because Michael was better acquainted with Treo. Michael agreed, and the two walked outside together. Oscar and a friend, Mike Ruiz, followed them because Oscar thought something was up. There were a lot of people outside. Bullock told Treo he was not a gang member and did not want any problems. Treo listened to Bullock and the two shook hands. Treo walked across the street and sat on the curb, but Hector Rojas and the two others stayed by Bullock's car. Michael told Hector and the others they were welcome to stay and put his arm around 
Hector's shoulder as a friendly gesture, but Hector hit Michael's hand off his shoulder. Hector became confrontational, and one of Hector's companions hit Michael on the side of the face. Michael became upset, took off his shirt, and asked Hector if he wanted to go. Michael did not hit anyone or take any swing at anyone, but he started hitting his fist in his hand. Oscar and Ruiz jumped in and held Michael back. Bullock was in front of Michael, also holding him back, and Michael was in front of the house by Bullock's car. Slater was also in close proximity. Bullock thought he remembered Michael being on the front porch. Then Treo, who was in the middle of the street, had gotten a gun out of his car, fired two shots in the air. Hector went over to Treo and grabbed the gun from him. Hector had fired the gun one time as he was running across the street towards Michael's driveway. Michael was walking toward the stairs in the front to go inside. Hector ran up on the lawn coming toward the front step and shot Michael in the back of the head. Michael never saw it coming. Hector then shot Michael three more times in the back. Bullock remembered being on the front porch and was struck by a gunshot that entered just above his right hip and punctured his intestine. He was found kneeling in a pool of blood in the bathroom at the back of the house. He had been drinking heavily at the earlier parties before he arrived at Michael's house and had no recollection of anything that happened between the time he left the last party and the time he woke up in the hospital the following day. Police recovered five bullet casings in various locations consistent with the semi-autic weapon. All were fired from the same 40 caliber gun. Hector Gutierrez was arrested a few days later. Both Bullock and Oscar identified Hector at trial as the person who killed Michael. In addition, Sarah McDonald, who had been on the front porch of the area near the front door most of the evening, saw Hector as the one in the red point the gun at Michael and shoot him in the back. She also saw two other guys get shot. She told police that after Hector got the gun from Treyo, he shot Michael in the back and then shot Oscar and Joey. The only testimony Hector presented at the trial was the testimony of an expert on eyewitness identification. Police testified at trial. Rancho San Pedro and Dodge City Crips got along until 1996 when a Dodge City Crip member was murdered at the housing development. Assaults and homicides between the two gangs followed, continuing for 10 years until Rancho San Pedro won the war for the Rancho San Pedro housing development. Although the Dodge City Crips were no longer a presence at the development, a recent influx of African-American families had resulted in a rise in anti-black graffiti scripted by Rancho San Pedro. Hector Gutierrez was sentenced to 75 years to life for the murder, plus a 25 years for the firearm enhancement, and plus another 50 for the two attempted murders. On October 15, 2007, 51-year-old David Franklin, a black man, and Chandra M. were on a walkway in the Rancho San Pedro housing development when Franklin was attacked by two Rancho San Pedro gang members. The attackers knocked Franklin down and stomped on him, kicked his head several times, and yelled derogatory and disrespectful things. When neighbors told them to stop, he said he was trying to wake Franklin up. He then dragged the victim a short distance and continued to hit him in the head. Eventually they left, leaving Franklin lying on the ground, unconscious and choking. Franklin never regained consciousness and later died from the massive brain hemorrhaging. He suffered deep bruising to the face, nose, and side of the head, but no other injuries. The crime was witnessed by the sisters Jessica and Amy, and by Alejandro. They identified Oscar Gomez as the one of the assailants in the photograph lineup, and at trial. Although she was reluctant to appear as a witness because she had been warned by associates not to testify, she identified Oscar at trial because one of the assailants, although she had also been warned to testify, identified the defendant in a photograph lineup at trial. Five days after the attack, Oscar was found with his girlfriend, Francisca Carmona, hiding in a crawl space in a residence in the Rancho San Pedro housing project. He was arrested. Antonio Gomez's Oscar brother was found hiding in a closet in the same residence. In late January 2008, two days before Oscar's preliminary hearing, Francisca and Antonio went to Jessica and Amy's house and told Edgar, their father, that if Jessica testified against Oscar, the gang would shoot his family in the house. When Deborah's neighbor protested, Karma punched her in the face, knocking her to the ground, and continued to kick her while she was on the ground. Police moved Edgar and his family to a hotel that night and kept them in hotels for several months. On May 11, 2009, 10 months before trial, the trial court granted Oscar's request to represent himself. Two months later, the court granted his request to terminate his pro se status, 
On the second day of trial, Oscar again requested leave to represent himself. This request was denied. Oscar Gomez was found guilty of first degree murder. He was also found guilty of allegations that the murder was willful, deliberate, and premeditated, and that he committed a hate crime. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, plus 10 years for the gang enhancement. I want to thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, tap that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Thank you.